guys welcome back to my channel it's me masa and i'm back again with another video so today's gonna be a quick story time on how i started wearing my jilbab and how i kept it on so for the most part i've worn a hijab my whole life and the reason why I do this is because in a western part of the world, we're told, I mean, we're not told this. We just created this idea of hijab being the scarf. So we'll refer, like, the scarf itself as like, oh, you know, this is my hijab. What in reality, that's just the scarf. That's a part of the hijab, right? What do you think of hijabis who wear tights? Number one, if a sister, so this is for the people that, that pound on women constantly and consistently, don't allow sisters to progress. Instead, they do exactly the opposite of what the Prophet ﷺ said. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تعين الشيطان عليه. Don't support a person's shaitan against them. If a person is wearing hijab that is not complete, that does not mean that you can say that they are not wearing hijab. That means they're wearing hijab, but there is a flaw in their hijab. You cannot say that it's as if you're not wearing hijab, you know, you are not muhajjaba. Okay, that's not appropriate to attack people to that extent, to beat them down. On the other hand, there is a hijab from the Prophet. We, we know what the bounds of hijab are. We know what the Prophet ﷺ has legislated as hijab. We're not talking about a difference of opinion of covering the face or covering the hands or covering the feet here. What we know is that it represents modesty. It represents modesty. So it should be loose clothing that does not show the, the figure of the body. At the same time, it should not draw more attraction. Some hijabs, some hijabs actually are a tease. They're more of a tease than they are a covering. Don't do something that would contradict the purpose of the hijab. So wear hijab to fulfill its purpose, inshallah. And at the same time, progress. It's not always all in, all out. It's not always all in, all out. You know, sometimes I'll see a sister who will wear, you know, short shorts, you know, or, or a skirt. And she's saying, one day I want to be a hijabi. It's like, aspire by getting closer, inshallah ta'ala. Start wearing long skirts. Start wearing baggy pants, loose pants. Start wearing long sleeve and things of that sort. But certainly, so the extremities that we have here, and I apologize, Sheikh, I'm taking way too much time. The extremities that we have here is we have one group of people that's acting as if the hijab does not exist. Then you have another group of people that's judgmental against non-hijabis. And there's, there, those are extremities. It's in the middle there. Yes, Allah will look at our insides, but these are manifestations of what is on the inside. These are mandatory actions, okay? So we have to try to act according to the command of Allah, but we've all got our own issues. Let's try to help our sisters, encourage them. One of the greatest things my mother-in-law, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her, what she used to do, they used to actually have parties for every sister that, that started to wear hijab to encourage them. It's not a bid'ah, it's okay. It's okay. No one is saying that it's the sunnah to throw a big party. And, no, but just encourage, encourage each other. Ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa. Help each other in, in obedience and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't beat each other down and make them feel like garbage. Help each other to get there. But don't blur the standard at the same time. Thank you. And it's okay because as you have a long answer, it gives him more time to read through his answer. So yeah, um, in 2018... Like I said, I was wearing the pants and the scarf like a lot of us do. And it was in the summer of 2018, I um, attended. Um, it was a, a, a gathering, an all-girls gathering. And I went with like I went with two of my friends, and that day, oh my God, it was it was it was amazing. Like it was life changing. It was it was people. Um, everybody was sharing their story on, um, just Islam in general. And some people were like converts, or some people say reverts. A lot of us that are born into Islam, you know, we don't we don't think that we have to like learn our religion because we feel like we we're born into it. We understand most of the rules, but it's like there's a lot more that we don't know. And a lot of the time, you don't know what you don't know. So yeah, that day, I learned a lot from those girls. Um, most of them were wearing niqabs. And I'm just like, yo, like I, I admire it. Like, I really like this. And I knew that a step closer to the niqab would be transitioning into the jalbab. So like like I said, I, will, I would have just my scarf on. But then I'm like, alright, I, I think I want to start wearing abayas and jalbabs, you know, covering from neck down because all I was doing was like covering my head but now I want to do like all my full body so yeah um that day it was so inspiring I'm just like oh my god like 
these people like I, I really love them and I want to be like them and you know like I like it's an inspiration especially because I was um I was still in high school at the time so like the next day I, I call my cousin and I'm like you know like does your mom have any more jalbabs I want to start wearing jalbab I'm gonna come right now and I'm gonna buy it whatever she's like yeah we have some so I did that like literally the next day I went I bought my first two jalbabs and I was so happy it felt like a life changer like I felt like I just felt like I was a new person, like I was reborn, like you know, like I like I don't know what it was, but it just felt like it was like a different feeling. So I I wore my jilba for the first time, and this was in the summer, as I mentioned. So I had to go to my high school to get something, and I wore it right. I was so nervous. Oh my god, like it, it was very nerve wracking. And a lot of the time, like when I now when I hear people saying that um. Oh, like I'm nervous to wear the hijab. Like I don't want to get stares and stuff. I'm just like, you, like I, I, I don't really get it, cause so many women in the United States wear hijab. So it's like, why do you think people will stare at you? Like I, to me, I'm like everybody knows what hijab is, but at the time, a lot of people were staring. I was so nervous. You would think like I'm walking around with like a sign on my forehead that's just like, oh, look at me. I, I was so nervous. I'm just like, oh my god, like everybody's looking at me on the train, getting out. And then even when I got to my high school, like some of the kids there, they were all staring at me like, what are you wearing? I think somebody even asked me that literally. They was like, Mama, so what are you wearing? And I was just like, oh, like, you know, I, I didn't even, I didn't even know what to say. Like, I was just, I was kind of embarrassed to be honest. Ugh. It hurts to say that, but I was kind of embarrassed of, um, like where, what I had on. I, I, I knew I wanted to wear it deep down and I knew that I really liked it, but I was just like, so like nervous and embarrassed of like other people looking at me but anyways so i wore it and like i said a lot of people were staring so fast forward i was enjoying wearing it like within myself like i felt better i felt happier i felt like a new person so i continued to wear it so um now fast forward to when school started again I started, I was wearing like the full jilbab and I told my school, I'm like, oh, like, you know, I don't want to wear the uniform. Mind you, I go to a straight charter school, so they don't allow stuff like that. Like, you can't just come and be like, oh, you don't want to wear this. Because they, they're going to look at it as, oh, there's a lot of Muslim girls in our school and nobody does that. So if you do that, you're going to make everybody else want to like not wear their uniform. And that's not good for us. Like, you know, you're going against school rules. I'll see if I can find the email that I sent the principal. I'm like, oh, you know, like, this is what I want to wear. And it's not up for negotiation. Like, I'm not, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, like, respectfully. Like, I know that, you know, like, you guys have a strict policy or whatever. But this isn't a negotiation. Like, I'm just letting you know that I'm no longer wearing high school uniform. I'm going to wear my jilbab. I'll purchase jilbabs within the school uniform colors just so I blend in with the other kids. Like, you know, that's the best I could do to help you guys. So I also sometimes I wear the um the school shirt over my jilbab. Like um it was like an Oxford button down. I would just like put it over like a cardigan and I wear my navy blue jilbab under because that was the closest to um our uniform colors. Thankfully, my high school they didn't have a problem with it. I don't I don't remember it vividly. Like I'll have to look back and see if I could find any email between us but i don't think they really had a problem with it because our school was diverse majority it was muslim kids black kids you know minority like it wasn't like a school where it's like okay like i don't feel comfortable here no like this school everybody was like family you know so yeah i started wearing my jilbab and like i said i was getting a lot of stares a lot of questions but i don't think it was coming from oh like you know they're trying to be funny they just really wanted to know like oh mama so why did you start wearing this and the the jilbab became my uniform and it, it just became a part of who I was and I knew that within wearing it like I would also have to change myself personally So I was I was a very like I still am aggressive, but I was a person that like Well, I, I think we all know how high schoolers act so I had to like, you know calm down a little bit and like, you know, like Act a little more civilized like, you know, you're wearing a hijab so you got to act like you're wearing a hijab as well now the question is how did i keep my hijab on so like i said before i really liked wearing it i don't know what it is i just felt like it wasn't something i'm, I'm looking at it as oh this is a burden like oh my god i have to wear this hijab like i'm gonna change when i get outside it wasn't none of that for me i personally chose to wear it and i really enjoyed wearing it and i it just felt good wearing it honestly like i feel like people treat you differently based on how you dress and this is in a good way like it's like you got you get respect more from like even adults like you know you could be let's say for example if you're wearing like certain clothes and you're walking past an adult in the street they wouldn't be first to greet you because you know 
they just gonna look at you like like you're a child they you greet them first but it's like i feel like when you dress a certain way you, it's like you're demanding respect like you know it's like i don't know but it, it does come with a lot of respect believe it or not adults will respect you other other um children would respect you to this day like um something i noticed is that like us kids we don't really greet each other we just say hi or like when it's like younger kids they would just walk past us especially if they don't know you but kids do um greet me when they see me in the street and i really like that i'm just like okay y'all think i'm one of y'all moms and aunts and stuff like i i like that like that's cute but yeah so i really feel like the jabab came with respect and that's something that motivated me as well at the time i was i was around other girls i was wearing so when you're in a place where you feel comfortable and y'all all look alike, it feels even better. And I was also attending a lot of lectures during 2018. I know a lot of y'all was going to the masjid at that time. It used to be a lot of lectures, Wednesday class, and all of that would motivate you to become better. Because not only are you wearing the hijab, but you re you learn why you're wearing the hijab, um, the benefits of wearing it. And also the hijab, like it, um, it kind of like... I feel like when you're wearing it, certain things you can't do and that really just helps you as a person. So for example, if I'm wearing a hijab, there's certain things I can't do outside. Like I can't stand in the middle of the street doing certain things because anybody that passes me looks at me as like, oh my God, this Muslim girl is doing this in the middle of the street because you're representing a religion. I feel like you get, like it comes with shame. You have shame. Now you have shame because you don't want to be looked at as, oh, you're Muslim and you're doing this. Or like, you know, you're wearing a hijab and you're doing this. And a lot of y'all might think that, oh, I don't care what people got to say about me. But I feel like shame is very important. We should all have, if, even if it's a little bit, we should, we should all have some type of shame. And when you're representing a, um, a, a religion, you have to like move accordingly. and Or at least try because it's hard, especially being that we live in a western, like we live, we live on the west side of the world. It's very hard. I'm not telling y'all like, oh, you got to be perfect because nobody's perfect. And I'm far from perfect. But it's like... You have to at least try, like, you know, you have to see within yourself that you're improving. You don't want to just be like, okay, this is how I am and I'm not going to change. It doesn't matter. I don't care what nobody got to say. That's not the way, that's not the right way to live. Also, a lot of people would text me about um, dressing more modest than they, they would ask me like, oh, how do you do it? And I feel like that alone, like, it pushes you because it's like, oh my God, like, I'm doing this for me. But it's like, a lot of girls are actually like wanting to do it because they see me do it so i feel like that motivated me a lot as well i gotta do better and i can't like you know i don't want to be a bad influence on anybody at all and that's that's another thing as long as you on social media and you posting you influencing somebody that's why you got to be very careful about what you put out online and also like what you say online what you do the pictures you post because you are influencing somebody whether you realize it or not whether you have a thousand followers or 500 followers you're influencing somebody somebody's looking up to you somebody's looking at you like oh my god like i really like this dress that she's wearing i like this skirt that she's wearing i like her eyelashes like i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna like you know i'm gonna do this because i've seen this person do it and it looks really nice on her and that might sometimes be a good thing like it depends on how you use your platform but that's why it's really like you have to um we have to be careful what we put out online i also forgot to mention that at the um that's also when i started my business so i'm like all right i have i have a modest business i dress modest until this day i never have to like buy any clothes because all the clothes that i wear i sell and it's like buying outside is an option like buying in store buying from some like another company is always an option but it's like I don't have to because I sell everything that I wear. You're outside and it's like prayer time. Sometimes you might like want to stop by a mosque and pray. And it's like the clothes that you're wearing, you you can't go inside a mosque with that. I feel like that that's also something that really stands out to me. I think to myself that, oh, like, you know, like I can't wear this outside because I can't go in a mosque like this. So if, if I don't feel comfortable going into a mosque, being seen in a mosque in this type of clothing, even if it's not a revealing type of clothes, but as, even if it's like jeans and like a cardigan or something, if I don't feel comfortable going into a mosque like that, I wouldn't really want to go outside like that because you never know, like I might have to end up going inside of a mosque or I might have to like, like pass by people that like, you know, know me and stuff. And I just, I really don't feel comfortable. And I feel like once you get used to wearing modest clothing, I feel like it's very hard to go back. It's very, very hard to go back because it's like you just don't feel comfortable anymore. Like literally, you don't feel comfortable being seen in certain types of clothing. And it's like, we be thinking about that. We be thinking like, oh, I don't want to bump into a family member or uh, ustaz or whatever. But it's like, you got to think that God always sees you. Like you, should, you shouldn't really care about people more than you care about God. So the same way we have shame for people to see us or like to go to masjid like that, we should also think about, oh, like, 
We don't like God is over the line. Don't tell me what to wear. Who on earth are you to tell me? My brothers and sisters, we're believers. And you know what? Yes, we do know that we feel hurt when people tell us the do's and don'ts. But I'm going to word it in a very beautiful way. We were created by the Creator and we're going to return to the Creator. So what we need to know is when He has asked us to dress in a specific way, find out what that way is and adopt it. And when you do that, you would then be considered a true believer and you would be preparing for the day that you meet with Allah. Why He asks you and I to dress in a specific way or at least to cover uh, in a certain way, there is a minimum and then inshallah, whatever you want to do beyond that is a good thing. But the reason why he says that, he knows there is holistic benefit for you in this world and the next. Take a look at the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs uh, a certain category of females to, to wear an outer garment and then he says, ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُذَيْنَ this is closer for them to actually uh, be recognized as m women of high morals and values, women who are chaste, women who are honorable, uh, and so they won't be harmed. So Allah is telling us in the Quran, and this is not just for women, it's for men and women, that if you were to adopt what I am telling you, you will find because of that recognition, people will consider you upon a certain level of values and morals, upon a certain standard of connection with Allah, upon a certain point. And therefore, they will not harm you. They will not look at you in a derogatory way. They will not uh, say bad words to you and so on of a certain perhaps uh, you know, degree. Now, at times people might say, well, there are those who are covered completely who are still abused. Well, the abuse is different, subhanAllah. One is to be abused because they would consider you of low morals and values. And one, the other is to be abused because they would consider you of high morals and values. So they cannot stomach the fact that you have a very high level of morals and you're just not dissolving in the cauldron. So subhanAllah, that irritation makes them pass comments. When you are enduring them, you're enduring them for the sake of Allah. It may make them uh, say hurtful words and at times even to the level of persecution. It's that persecution or harmful words that you're enduring for the sake of Allah. The reward is tremendous. But then there is that that you're enduring for the sake of shaitan, which means, or for your own sake. So I'm enduring this because I decided that I really don't want to cover the way as a believer I'm supposed to cover. Nowadays, people say, do what you want. I know from a secular perspective, that may be what is valid. But from a religious perspective or from an Islamic perspective, those who believe have set themselves a certain level. Come on, find out what that level is, find out for yourself and be interested in it because we don't want to get to a day when it's too late. We're saying we're believers. So find out what you're supposed to be doing, the level of dress, both, both male and female, and do that and see the benefit. So the next time someone reminds you, I know the reminding is different from person to person. Some people are harsh the way they speak. Some people have a softer tone. Some people might just encourage you without even speaking. So everyone has a different way of getting the message across. But try and understand, ultimately, everyone wants to see goodness for themselves and for others. And I hope when we speak to others, we don't just attack them or speak in a very judgmental way, rather in an encouraging way, in a beautiful way, tapping them to say, you know what, my brother, my sister, find out for yourself and make sure that you know what revelation states and you understand that this is what I'm supposed to do and I'm supposed to be upon the highest level of morality, values, 
the most beautiful dress that will uh, relate me to the right things or connect me to the right things and they will actually uh, make me known for the right reasons and so on and then dress that way may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all أقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I hope it motivated somebody that really wants to cover up. Covering up, like I don't think there's anything better than it. I wouldn't choose it any other way. I still see like you know it's, it's your, you could still be tempted, but temptations are normal. It's not like we're not tempted as hijabis to do certain stuff, but as long as you you have faith in you know like your creator and you really want to do it god is going to make it easier for you it's not going to be as hard as you like as long as you want it you could do it buy your first jilbab ways if you have any questions leave them below and make sure you like my video and subscribe share it with your friends and family and see y'all in my next video bye